morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from worldwide. I'm Sterling. It's great to have you back on the channel. Uh, the show's being recorded for Sunday, April 7th, 2024. As always, these shows are provided for entertainment purposes only. All the information I share with you comes real time through my guides, angels, extended spiritual counsel, ETs, famous people from history. So for entertainment purposes only. For those who need to reach me, just go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Look for the book a session tab. Very straightforward. And I think we have some dates not available in August and September and maybe a couple in October. Uh, but the online calendar is always up to date. Also, if you just get a chance to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, all those things really help the back end of the channel, all the algorithms. So wonderful to be with you here today, Sunday, April 7th. You know, I uh, have a couple of uh, quick announcements to make. Uh, this week, we actually launched what's called our Platinum Level uh, YouTube channel membership. It's now available. If you go to the YouTube channel, you can find the Join button. Uh, if you're looking for an easier way, sometimes it doesn't. the Join button doesn't always appear on the YouTube channel on some mobile devices. You can actually go to our website, sterlingpsychicmedium.com, and on the homepage, we've placed a button there actually labeled a YouTube membership. It'll take you right to the uh, the join screen on YouTube. So very happy to be uh, offering that, starting that uh, this week here. And you know we're providing uh, full access to all the archives of videos. I think there's over 200 uh, inspirational, educational, uh, mediumship videos from people in across history. So about 200 videos in the archive. Also, we'll be starting live uh, members-only chats or, or streams, if you will. So that'll be started. We'll get a schedule up on the uh, community board before long. I think a lot of those will start taking place on Friday or Friday mornings, Pacific time, somewhere around 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time on Fridays. Uh, but we'll get a schedule up uh, before long. And also, uh, one of the other benefits we'll add in as membership is that once a month, we'll randomly select um, a winner from the members group uh, for a free half hour session with myself. We'll use a computer app to randomly select from the winner. I'm sorry, the members. In addition, if you watch the channel all the time, you know that we actually give away also another free half hour session with myself uh, every time we cross a new level of 1,000 subscribers. I think we're uh, less than 100 subscribers away from the next level of 48,000. And the way you enter that contest is just simply by entering comments in the shows where we cross over to the next 1,000. Uh, could be the show for all we know here. And then we use a computer app to randomly select from the comments in those shows that start off with the word love. You only have to start off your comment with the word love if you want to enter the contest. Otherwise, not required. We could ask that all the time. So hopefully that's helpful. Excited to announce the Platinum Level YouTube membership. Again, uh, easy way, just go to our website, sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Look for the YouTube membership button. I'll take you right there. And uh, also, so following on from that, on today's show, I think we had 400 questions on the community board. And my wife does go through them meticulously and tries to draw on a batch of questions that we feel will be you know, most valuable. I then look at them here real time with you. I think there's almost 80 questions uh, for this show. Uh, looks like that's 77 questions. So uh, uh, she keeps ramping up the level here. Every It's all good. Uh, happy, to, uh, happy to get as many questions and answers as we can each week. And uh, just a quick reminder, if, if your question doesn't get answered, you're more than welcome to place it again on the community board under the uh, the request that we place out on Mondays, asking for questions and topics for the shows. If your question doesn't get answered the first week, it might be two, three, or four weeks down the road. We're not sure. But you know, with the constant number of questions, I think we had 500 questions last week, uh, 400 this week. So we're we're trying to we're trying to get through them. So uh, bear with us, a little bit of patience, uh, but we're happy to help out any way we can. So wonderful to be with everybody here. Uh, on that note, let's get going on today's show. So question 77: uh, Many Americans are leaving and relocating to Europe. What is the future of areas like? Portugal over the next 10 years. You know, I see Portugal as being uh, one of the fastest growing countries in Europe or the EU, uh, maybe fourth or fifth fastest growing, but I do see growing pains. You know, I'm going to tell you significant growing pains for Portugal, both politically, economically, in order to kind of get everything uh 
level set. Let's put it that way. Uh, a lot of growing pains here for, for Portugal. Uh, they'll get through it successfully over a 10-year period here. And seriously, the person asked about a 10-year period. But it, it is going to be rather a significant growth period, a lot of growing pains, and a lot of political strife, and even the economic strife here and there with allocating resources. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a major growth uh, time here for Portugal. 76, we lost our kitty, Vader, yesterday. The ER team tried so hard to save him, but in the end, he was just too sick and we had to let him go. My question is, even though he was heavily sedated, did he know I was holding him close as he took his last breath? Did he know how much we loved him and how it hurt us so much to let him go? Is he okay? Do animals reincarnate quicker than humans? You know, with Vader, I think is your kitty's name. Uh, what I get is he was already out of his body uh, almost hours before his body gave up. So he's actually already outside his body watching you. We knew everything was going on. Not untypical for animals to do this. Um, animals are not required to go through suffering. They're part of the angelic realm. Your, your kitty was outside his body. He does understand everything that went on. Um, I also see that he joined it very quickly, not only with his immediate animal family, but it looks like uh, some individuals close to you on the other side. It looks like a sister and a mother or grandmother. But there's there's some women here that uh, immediately joined him. So he's, you know, remember, all animals are here to teach us lessons. That's what the interesting part. Um, so take the lesson of love that he left with you. And uh, he's doing just fine. Um in fact, I see him running around, running around right now. So, no, he's doing just fine. And uh, what a, what a lovely, uh, lovely kitty he was, uh, Vader. 75. Also, well, I see 75 here. Will Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, or Alex Jones ever be held responsible for spreading misinformation? Well, Alex Jones, I think, already went through a number of court cases and had judgment. You know what I see with all these individuals? They they will continue to have court cases and judgments against them, but they're going to effectively effectively be able to evade financial uh, payout because a lot of the financial resources are going to be pushed offshore. So they're going to be protected. Uh, but yeah, I do see court cases, judgments, successful judgments going against these individuals. Um, but looks like, unfortunately, a lot of the money is going to be hidden. Um, so that's something that will start to get corrected as we go years down the road here uh, with other administrations uh, to kind of fine tune the controls and, and the way banking is done. Certainly uh, new blockchain systems, blockchain technology and the, the digital banking systems are going to help uh, correct that problem. But unfortunately for these individuals, it looks like they're going to be able to protect or shield their assets even though judgments will be there. 74, hello, Sterling and team. The Iran hostages, 9-11 victims, and many groups and individuals receive funds from the U.S. Victims of State Sponsored Terrorism Fund. I'm familiar with it. This year, there are not enough funds. Going forward, will the U.S. VSST receive enough financing each year to be able to pay the recipients? I, I see a new influx of financing into this fund is starting in 2025. And actually, my team's also saying like aggressive uh, notification of a lot of beneficiaries. So it looks like not everybody that's entitled to these funds is aware of it. Like the, the word hasn't gotten out. So I do see new financing, influx of new financing and funds, and then aggressive uh, outreach to people that need to know about these funds being available. So uh, a lot of good things here around that. Uh -huh. 73, hi, Sterling. What can we expect from Hope Hicks' testimony? You know, I, I see a lot of truth coming from her testimony, uh, kind of really um, allowing a very effective look inside of what's going on. This is in the hush money trial, I think, um, Stormy Daniels' hush money trial. Uh, I do see like, a lot of truth coming from her uh, and a need to kind of set the record straight. So I think she's already testified once or twice or something here, but uh, I keep getting a lot of truth coming from the testimony. So it'll be very eye-opening and very helpful in that, uh, in that hush money trial. I think, I think Alvin Bragg is handling that one, if I remember correctly. 
72, high sterling. On February 15, 2024, Jared Kushner in a Harvard University interview praised the very vulnerable potential of Gaza's waterfront property. The next day, an article appeared in the counterpunch titled, How is the proposed Ben Gurion, uh, yeah, Gurion Canal, tied to the Gaza invasion? Israel would collect $66 billion annually if this canal is built. Was this war with Hamas purposely started for this reason? And does Jared Kushner have a role in all this conflict? The Ben, yeah, the Ben Gurion Canal. What I see is for the Middle East, this is this has been on the docket, so to speak, or plan for you know, many decades. But um, uh, a lot of individuals were unwilling to do anything in terms of starting a war, so to speak. Now. I don't get a direct connection with, let's say, the war being started for that canal, but I do see what I call opportunistic behavior. That once the war started, now if we can keep it going and get access to that, I, I do see that's one of the reasons that they keep pushing, trying to keep pushing the war forward. Remember, I said the, the war in Gaza is going to last at least a year from the start of that October 7th of last year. Uh, and before it starts going into negotiation for a two-state solution. Yeah, and I think you're asking this first asked question. Um, I do see that uh, that 45's family members have a hand in some of this in terms of benefits that would come from that. Because it looks like the Saudis are involved investment-wise as well. Um, interesting, yeah. So it's all tied together. A lot of opportunistic behavior going on here. Uh, Cause that and it looks like that canal will be built. Absolutely. Yeah. 71. I Sterling, when I was about seven, I woke up during the night with a strong impression that I needed to walk outside to open field adjacent to an open field adjacent to my home. Walking barefoot, I made it to the field and saw what looked like a flying saucer. I then recall standing hand in hand with what looked like tall grays under the saucer. I was told shortly after to return to my bed. I remember this like it was yesterday. I'm 51 now. Was I part of an ET abduction? No ET abduction for this individual. Um, however, it does look like there is an extraterrestrial ship passing through the neighborhood uh, on the way to a, like a military base. So I'm not sure exactly where this person was living uh, I don't think it references a place here, but what I'm getting here is that uh, my team saying it's not an abduction, not an ET abduction that occurred here, but witnessing uh, what looks like a drone ship, uh, extraterrestrial drone ship, drone craft. I'm going to call it a shuttle craft moving between a mothership and a military base. Uh -huh. 70. Sterling and team, do you see a more holistic approach to health that governments will support in Canada? You know, I do. Um, it looks like the entire COVID-19 pandemic really accelerated um, Canadian government or health systems and looking at alternative ways of, of health and healing. So it does look like it's getting accelerated uh, in a way that it wouldn't have if the pandemic hadn't happened. So I, I, there's good things going on there. Um, so I think they're going to integrate, you know, homeopathic treatments, you know, acupuncture, uh, believe it or not, even Reiki healing at some point here. Um, so I, I see good things here. There's like a tipping point here for Canadian health system. I think that's what they're asking about, right? Uh, well, it's Canadian government and health system. I, I do see that. And again, I keep hearing from my team, the pandemic accelerated this forward. 69, high sterling and team with banks closing in the UK. Do your guides see a cashless society very soon or will the UK fight to keep cash? You know, the UK, along with a lot of the world, uh, will be a cashless society within about two decades here. So about 2044, so about two decades. Uh, within one decade, a lot of uh, digital cashless transactions will be very common. Again, with blockchain technology, that's distributed ledger technology, uh, and I won't get into all the details on that, but they're going to use like blockchain technology for a lot of this. Uh, yeah, it, it's coming, but it's about two decades before UK, a lot of the world really starts to get cashless. Uh -huh. 67. Uh, I'm sorry. 68. Lost my track. 69, 68. 
Senator Josh Hawley, a Missouri Republican, continues to show a large lead in the polls over Democratic challenger, former Lucas uh, Zakuntz. Uh, will Josh Hawley win in November? Yeah, it, it looks like he will win uh, by outspending his candidates. So like a lot of money being thrown at the campaign to, to message out there. It looks like it looks like Josh Hawley will, in fact, be the winner uh, by outspending. 67. Will this pope be the last pope? Uh, this was according to Nostradamus. What will happen with the Vatican if this happens? You know, I, I read this before. I don't see this uh, being the last pope. Um, I do see stepping down uh, within this year here. I see another male pope uh, for an interim period. And then I see a female pope. I know it's surprising to a lot of people, but I, I see a female pope stepping in. And this is going to surprise the world. Uh, but so I, I, I don't see this uh, current pope as being the last pope. Um, whoever asked this question, they said, according to Nostradamus. Uh, remember, a lot of the quatrains that were interpreted by Nostradamus were, were interpreted. Uh, so anyway, and, and I brought Nostradamus through several times on these shows, and even he's talked about some of the interpretations that have gone on worldwide, and uh, it wasn't always what he meant. He had to kind of hide some of his messages. 66, Sterling and team are the authoritarian leaders of our countries like Russia, China, and North Korea, et cetera, who oppose the world power of the U.S., covertly working in tandem on a master plan to implode our system of government and is 45 an active agent in this strategy. You know, um, the answer is yes to all the questions being uh, inferred here, asked directly. The answer is yes, but it won't be successful. Democracy actually will still stand quite prominently around the world and in the U.S. But yes, um, yes to all the questions being asked here in 66. 65, is it possible for people who have the ability to channel, channel people from the future? Yes, but there are a few guidelines here. So uh, guides and angels always have access to the Akashic records. You can see the future. That's where some of the information comes from. There are ascended masters. They're allowed to pass information uh, to individuals regarding the future. Um, however, for most uh, homo sapiens, sapiens or whatnot, individuals with a crossover, they're going through multiple reincarnations, they're not allowed to share information from the future. Um, it's a rule of the universe. Uh, information from the future is always meant to help humanity. Uh, it's not meant for uh, nefarious reasons, you know, betting, gambling, uh, making investments, those kinds of things, but it's always been the information comes through. So the information from the future, channeling some from the future, usually it's a higher level entity, spiritual entity, guides, angels, archangels, individuals connected to the Akashic records, but but not usually, uh, I want to call them lower level, but what I mean by this, homo sapien sapien, uh, even souls that have been reincarnated 50, 100 times, uh, not really allowed to pass information from the future. So hopefully that helps. 64 team you have said one you have said one source one force is this god well you know, there are many terms for the one source the one force uh many many terms used around the uh the, the world uh, but the one source the one force is the power that's omnipresent uh omnipotent all powerful uh it's an energy it's not a person uh, but yeah, there are, there are many term, terms used. And I think sometimes uh, the reason my team, and when I connect with the one source, one force, and my angels and guides, the reason they use the term one source, one force is that in some uh, religious activity, some of the terminology gets connected with, uh, let, let's say, things that happen in humanity that aren't spiritual. Uh, so like, for example, the wrath of God or something like that. My team's just reminding me here. So, you know, uh, my team always refers to the one source, the one force. Just understand that it's uh, omnipresent, omnipotent, all-powerful. 63, Sterling and team, what is the possibility of a hybrid getting married to a human? This does happen and can happen in many cases. But remember, extraterrestrials work with a lot of individuals, uh, and it's always for a higher purpose. So it has to do with health, science, world peace, uh, 
you know, things of that nature. Um, so it's never something that happens randomly. It's always on the individual's life path, but it can happen and it does happen in some cases. Yes. And, and remember all hybrids are down here to help humanity. 62, did Netanyahu know terrorists would attack and kill people at the music venue? Apparently the place usually had security, but there was none that night and it took the police an hour to get there. Plus he did not heed the warning from information shared by American intelligence sources that there was Hamas attack planning focused on a major event. You know, I, I get that, yes, uh, Netanyahu had advanced information, but didn't find it credible. And I also get there was a lot of infighting among Israeli government officials and other factions of the government. And so they really couldn't get all on the same page. So it wasn't all, I can't, my team saying it wasn't all, let's say, Netanyahu's decision or not decision. A lot of infighting in the government and, and a choice not to take some of it seriously fighting about resources. So um, yeah, I think that's the question this person really asked here. Uh, no terrorists kill people. Yeah, I mean, they're aware of the information, but uh, no one believed it completely concretely. And that was part of the problem. I think that's where a lot of the infighting happened inside the Israeli government and even with the military. So uh, yeah, 61. Uh, by the way, my, my team's just saying overall, what this ended up doing was crippling uh, Israel's ability to respond. So it kind of crippled uh, the ability to respond. 61, hi, Sterling and team. I so enjoy watching orbs on my security camera. I see them flying through my bedroom and outside my windows. Outside, they seem to zip very quickly past, uh, but not so in my bedroom. They fly down from the ceiling up into view and sideways. Can you give any information on the orbs? The sizes are all different. Any info would be greatly appreciated. You know, we all have many orbs around us at any time, and they can be animals, spirits, guides, uh, all sorts of individuals from the other side. Uh, the size and color has everything to do with who they are. The larger orbs and the more blue, violet-shaped orbs, those are high energetically. So uh, just, you know, they call it shorter wavelength, not to get too technical, but short wavelength, uh, high energy, ultraviolet, violet. Uh, those are uh, orbs that are usually the angels and guides, family members, animals, they might be uh, more towards the orange or red spectrum, uh, sometimes green, um, but you know, it all depends. But we all have many orbs around us. Now, a lot of times the human eyes don't pick them up very well, but because uh, they kind of show up in the infrared spectrum, that's what they call below red. Uh, so you're not going to see color, but iPhones, a lot of mobile devices, those cameras uh, have sensitivity to the infrared spectrum, and you actually will easy, more easily see uh, orbs on cameras. That's kind of why you see them. By the way, that works for extraterrestrial ships as well. Uh, usually if you use different types of camera, digital camera technology, it's easier to see than with the human eye. 60 in the countdown. Will the city of New York win the case against the retirees? to force them into a Medicare Advantage plan. Will this be determined uh, detrimental to the retirees if this happens? Will other cities use this as a uh, precedence to implement this type of plan for their employees? No, I, I don't see the, the New York government or New York City, City of New York, uh, becoming successful in forcing individuals to go into Medicare Advantage. Um, I believe they're doing it for financial reasons, right? And the city's trying to save money. But it looks like more money coming into the budgets as we get into 2025 and beyond. Uh, some of it from the federal budgets helping states. Uh, but no, I, I don't see it being successful. Yes, it would uh, hurt some retirees if they're forced. And other states are looking at this, but it does not look like they'll be successful. And it looks like maybe in one state here, not New York, they may pass it and then it gets overturned, it gets appealed. So I don't see a successful implementation of these cities or states forcing, I guess their state employees uh, or retirees into Medicare Advantage. Now, my team says it's not gonna happen long-term. 59, when will Ukraine get funding? Will Mike Johnson allow a vote or will more Republicans leave so Jeffries becomes speaker? You know, new funding is coming for Ukraine just within a few weeks here. And I do see Johnson bring it to the floor, but I don't see him stepping down for several weeks. Uh, when I read on this, even months and months ago, my team was saying that 
Mike Johnson would step down within the second quarter. You know, so we're get, we're in the second quarter right now of uh, the year. Uh, but it, it looks like uh, not for many weeks here will he step down. But there is something coming here. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be a little tenuous for him. But I do see Ukraine funding uh, something coming to the floor, being voted on, and it's going to get through. 58, do you see any breakthroughs in knowledge of and treatment for restless leg syndrome? I do. Um, so I guess they call this RLS, right? Restless leg syndrome. Um, it looks like it, it does occur. It's a neurological issue and it has something to do with uh, brain chemistry here. So it looks like they are, they are studying this right now, what the gene components are. And it looks like within a few years here, they're going to have a solution that's really going to help with this. Uh, does this person say just breakthroughs in knowledge? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I keep hearing that they're actually going to almost, I think they've already actually uh, are on to which genes in the brain are neurologically uh, help affect RLS. So you got a few years to go here, but I, I tell you, three, four years here, they're showing me uh, we're going to have something that's really going to start to be very effective treatment for that. Won't be a complete cure, but an effective treatment. And then another eight years, well, eight years from now, you start to see uh, cures for it. 57, high sterling and team. How can you tell if you're an old soul or a younger soul? You know, if you know your life path purpose, that's always a good indicator. A lot of teacher healers, and that's two of the 12 different life path purposes, uh, teacher healers typically are uh, almost about 100 reincarnations. So you're an older soul, extremely old souls, over 1,000 reincarnations. But typically teacher healers are around the 100 reincarnations mark. Um, now, if you don't know what your life path is, you can talk to a professional psychic medium or somebody that can help you to serve like what your life path is all about. You know what else is interesting? Uh, my team's reminding me of this. Um, a lot of advanced souls come down to experience more traumas. And that may sound counterintuitive, but um, as, as souls get more and more higher energetically, they agree to come down to help humanity even more. And so what, I, what I've always seen is that a uh, very old soul will come down and experience more traumas, learn the lessons through those traumas. They could be medical, physical, emotional. But then before they leave the planet, they turn around and help humanity. They write books. They give TEDx talks. Uh, so yeah, so these are all indicators kind of of whether you're a younger soul or an older soul. Remember, all souls create at the same time. But whether you're an older soul or younger soul has everything to do with the number of reincarnations you've had uh, on Earth. 56, what will be the impact of Knight Specialty Insurance and the Chairman Don Hankey for underwriting 45's $175 millimeter, uh, million dollar bond in New York? You know, I, well, I see a federal investigation opening up. It looks like uh, more financing is going to come from offshore sources, uh, additional ancillary financing for 45 to support uh, the bond requirement. So they're, they're actually going to get all this worked out. They're playing kind of a, a shell game here. Um, but I do see a federal investi investigation opening up on Knight Specialty Insurance Company. Um, and, and, you know, and Knight, they've been involved. Uh, this individual has been involved. Don, what's his name here again? Don Hankey. Um, I get through many campaigns, even help like uh, Mitt Romney's campaign. So he's kind of been a friend of the GOP for a long time here. But uh, but anyway, 45 is eventually going to get the financing he needs, offshore sources coming. And it looks like there will be an investigation around night uh, specialty insurance. Um, but they're, they're going to work it all out. 55. Hello, Sterling and team. My boyfriend lost his dad recently on March 20th, 2024. His dad lived in Florida and whenever we visited, he took us on the boat, and very often we would see dolphins, and, and some would even follow the boat for a little bit. Today, we rented a boat while on vacation in North Carolina. We saw a group of dolphins that hug, uh, hug out by the boat, or I'm sorry, hung out by the boat, much longer than any other time in the past. And one dolphin came right up to the boat where my boyfriend was sitting and splashed him a little bit. Was this his dad trying to say hello? If so, what message was he trying to relay? Uh, this was absolutely a direct message from your boyfriend's father. Now, remember, uh, 
when we're on the other side, we can influence animals. Animals become communicators. So it wasn't his father directly. It was his father influencing the animals, the dolphins, trying to get a message across saying, I made it, I'm okay, I love you. It's actually usually a very direct message. Loved ones try to get to us. Uh, the most common messages are, I'm here, I made it, I'm okay. Everybody always makes it to the other side, but they always really need to say that. Uh, if there's any uh, ambiguity about that. But yeah, this is absolutely your uh, your boyfriend's father working through the dolphins, trying to get a loving message out to your boyfriend. Absolutely. Okay, 54 on the countdown. Hello, Sterling and team. Do you see America ever enacting gun laws, restrictions, and if so, when and to what extent? I do see starting in 2025, again, with the new, uh, the new Biden administration, I do see uh, much more stringent uh, a ban on certain types of assault weapons. I do see that. Um, on, I, I, you know, I do see, a, a, I'm going to call it an aggressive uh, registration program rolled out, almost like the Department of Motor Vehicles. So annually having to register guns and even pay a small fee. Uh, it's like running out like DMV registration. I see very extensive background checks being implemented using artificial intelligence. Now, the beauty of using artificial intelligence is you can actually assimilate trillions of pieces of data to make decisions. Uh, so if somebody's a higher risk, you can actually um, look into that a little bit. So yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna be fought as it goes through Congress, but I do see starting in 2025. And it's starting to roll out. They're going to see much more stringent background checks, uh, a ban on certain types of assault weapons. Um, yeah, so all, all this is really going to start to roll out in a very good way. I'm, I'm very happy to see that too. Uh, humanity needs, you know, uh, this type of, you know, little better controls uh, so that we're all safer. You know, nobody's going to try to take away anybody's rights. Uh, but remember, you know, when when the Constitution was written. And they, they were looking at, at the amendments in the Constitution. We weren't dealing with assault weapons at that time. So 53, my, my, my team's also reminding me that, you know, it's like uh, you, you're not allowed to have an have a armored tank in your front yard and use, use the guns on the armored tank. So, you know, we got to bring some reasonableness back to all this. 53, high Sterling and team, well, Harvard Genesis, David Sinclair's research with epigenics uh, dysregulation have a significant impact on curing human illnesses in the near future. Do your guides show the time frame and will his work restore eyesight, uh, work restoring eyesight be effective in humans, including macular off retinal detachment? If not, will other solutions be found? I don't, you know, um, what I get on this individual, his name is Doc, uh, Harvard Genesis David Sinclair. I get a lot of the research has to do with DNA research and slowing down the aging process. I'm not sure my team, we're not getting the direct connection with uh, macular degeneration or what's the sort, restoring eyesight, uh, macular off retinal detachment. Uh, I'm getting whatever's going on here is going to have a really good uh implementation around DNA and slowing down the aging process. I'm not getting the direct connection around eyes and retinas for this. It uh, looks like some other gene editing technology is coming for that. So um, hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. I just, uh, my team's saying, yeah, good progress here, but it's almost like slowing down the advancement of aging. 52, Florida Supreme Court this week upheld the 15-week abortion ban. On the November 2024 Florida state ballot, there's a measure to amend the Florida state constitution protecting abortion rights in Florida. Will it pass and allow women in Florida to have abortions? It needs 60% to pass. No, unfortunately, I don't see this passing in Florida. The Florida state constitution is that what we're talking about? Yeah. I don't see it passing. Um, I do see a federal federal guidelines passing and and the the restoring of Roe v. Wade. And so somehow those federal guidelines will be able to help uh, Floridians or women in Florida. Uh, but looks like in terms of getting it in the Florida state constitution, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, according to my team, fifty one. Hello, Sterling and team. Ken Paxton of Texas admitted to throwing out thousands of votes 
in the last election. Since he's still in office, will he do it again to ensure Republicans win, or can he somehow be stopped from doing it again? You know, yes, I, I do see a, a lot of cheating, uh, well, things going on here uh, in that area. I want to be careful here for entertainment purposes only, but they're not going to be able to get away with it this time. Uh, I see stricter controls in place. And here again, using blockchain, what they call distributed ledger technology, so that uh, it provides a lot of checks and balances when, you, when you're uh, managing data, managing votes. Uh, cross-validating data. So I do see them trying, but it does not look like it's successful due to the other new safeguards are being put in place. 50. The new movie Civil War is coming out this month. The trailers are disturbing. It is sad that someone chose to release this type of movie while America Americans are going through such a divisive time. Do you see this movie making problems worse when it comes out? No, I don't see this changing the landscape uh, substantively. I really don't. It uh, looks like everybody that has a certain mindset, so to speak, is going to keep their mindset. So uh, the more radical groups are already radicalized. Um, it will provide some insights into you know, the way things could play out. But I, I, I do not see a civil war. My team is saying not a civil war. There are pockets of a lot of unrest. But it looks like the, the movie will be kind of a media blip. So uh, you see it talked about a lot in the press for a while, and then it's going to kind of go away. Uh, but it's not necessarily going to radicalize people. Uh, there are already some small groups were already radicalized. Uh, so uh, my team is saying it's more of like a blip on the radar. The movie comes out. So uh, not to worry. 49. Thank you, Sterling and team. Is the Pi Network crypto project ever going to launch, or are the developers scamming? So far, no money has been lost, but they have millions of users all over the world spending their time on the mobile phone mining app. It's believed that they are using the ad revenue from the app to make money and never plan on launching an actual alternative uh, coin. You know, um, I don't know if this has been going on for five years or something, but it looks like it's eventually going to get launched, but... Uh, uh, I want to be careful here. Um, significant value problem. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, difficult. You know, the entire cryptocurrency, um, want to call it spectrum, uh, highly risky, highly volatile. And, you know, the problem you have is that uh, unlike, let's say, the stock market, where a lot of the value in stock is based on real companies uh, producing real products, uh, everything around crypto is is a whole nother uh, way to kind of uh, how they're creating value. I want to, so I want to be very careful what I say here. But it looks like it'll eventually launch. But I see significant uh, issues around value for entertainment purposes only. Forty eight. Hi Sterling. You mentioned last Sunday that the Egyptian pyramids were built using anti gravity handheld devices. There are engravings on Egyptian artifacts of characters carrying what looks like purses. And no one seems to know uh, what they are. Uh, are these purses the source of the anti-gravity propulsion or some other kind of power? You know, I've read on this before. Uh, those items that look like purses are actually communication devices. So they were communication devices to allow uh, humans, homo sapiens sapiens, to communicate with extraterrestrials when they weren't on the planet. Uh, they're, they're communication devices, so those weren't the anti-gravity uh, propulsion devices used to move tonnage of stones, no. 47. Thank you, Sterling and team, for your service. After my late husband was taken to the operating room for organ donation, a young man came up to me dressed as a janitor. He took my hands in his and began to speak, but I don't recall anything he said. What I do remember is how very unusual his hands felt in mine. They felt like they were very damp uh, baseball gloves. He was a small statured person. So I just remember how very odd his hands felt in mine. Was he a guide or angel sent to comfort me somehow that day? This was what they call an earth angel. So earth angels are are human, uh, but they're they're highly always on call. So it's almost like radio calls to the police department. They actually they actually are very well connected to the other side. They actually have great healing powers. 
and they actually respond to the calls from the universe. So they actually, they will actually get messaging. There's someone that needs help uh, on the fifth floor of this hospital or go to this corner at Fifth and Elm and help this person in this in this accident or prevent them from getting hurt. So this was a this was an earth angel. Um, now, there are real angels that come down to earth many times that they have to save your life. I've seen this many times uh, occur. We, we won't go through that right now. We'll include that later on in some of the shows. But this is an example of an earth angel, and there are thousands on the planet right now. They're here to help. 46, hello, Sterling. 45's press secretary said 45 will have soldiers monitoring polling locations and stations. Still others have said 45 indicated that he and Putin are working on something. Uh, number one, do you see any nefarious activity during voting? I guess it's just one question here. Do you see any nefarious activity during voting? You know, I, I see, uh, yeah, I see the potential to manipulate data uh, in data centers uh, connected with tracking voting. But here again, this is where blockchain technology is going to be very, very helpful. Yeah, there's a lot of safeguards put in place here. So, I, yeah, I do see, uh, yeah, the monitoring of polling stations. There's going to be a lot of um, a push and pull around the elections. Uh, remember, I do, I do still see Biden winning by the popular vote and electoral college vote, and he will be uh, sworn in again. He'll be the continuing president in the next president's term, that is Biden. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna have some things we have to deal with, but I do see additional safeguards in place. And the fact there'll be extra people monitoring the polling locations from both sides, you know, both Republican and Democratic uh, factions, um, they'll be able to strike a balance, it'll, it'll be okay. 45. Love and thanks, Sterling and team. On August 14, 2000, Sheila Falang Jordan, that's F-A-L-L-I-N-G, Falang Falang, so Sheila Falang Jordan, a young mother with two children was brutally murdered in Livingston, Montana. As of yet, no one has been brought to justice. Can you tell us if this case will ever be solved or clues on helping it be solved? You know, I see new DNA evidence coming forward here. I do believe it's going to get solved. And this your name is Sheila Falong Jordan. It looks to me like as soon as next year, this new DNA evidence is coming forward. And I am getting, um, there's a connection to people she knew. And it, it also looks to me like there's some family-related members here that knew what happened and know what happened. So this is interesting. Um if uh, the police are listening, there, there's a family connection here uh, with this case, and there's new DNA evidence uh, coming up. And it looks like we're going to make big progress as we get out of 2025 on this case. I said a lot of love and light out to uh, Sheila's family, uh, the Jordan family. Um, but it looks like the progress is going to be made here. 44. Hello, Sterling and team. Can you tell me when and if Alex Jones will pay up? the Sandy Hook families and will get away with pleading bankruptcy or, and will he get away with pleading bankruptcy? You know, no, unfortunately, I don't see uh, any large financial payouts going to the families of uh, the, San the Sandy Hook families. It looks like a lot of the financing will be protected offshore. And uh, as I said, uh, there'll be new laws coming in, in coming years here that will protect us or stop us from happening. Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like um, a lot of the money will be protected and and don't see any large scale payouts. Uh, my heart goes out to a lot of the Sandy Hook families, uh, a lot of love, light. Uh, but it, of course, my team's telling me here regarding a uh, payout from Alex Jones. 43. Do you see a large earthquake happening soon in the new Madrid seismic zone in the middle of the U.S., which affects Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky? Yes, uh, within the next one to two years here, rather significant between 4.5, 7. Yeah, there's there's an earthquake coming. I've read on this before a few years ago, um, and it's coming. Over the next one to two years here, there's an earthquake coming. Um, I don't see mass destruction, but, you know, it, it's uh, it's unsettling. That's for sure. If you've ever been through an earthquake, you know, in California, we, we go through earthquakes on a regular basis. So it's... Uh, 
uh, kind of business as usual to some extent. There's some big ones coming for California, but um, yeah. So it looks like along the, what they call the new Madrid seismic zone, there, there's an earthquake coming. Worry two, will President Joe Biden finish his eighth term successfully? Yes, very successfully, in fact, he'll be able to finish the entire second term. 41, will the Israeli strike on the world central kitchen workers bring about an end to the conflict in Gaza? No, unfortunately, um, it, it's another event in the timeline here. It's not going to bring about uh, a stop to the entire war. It's going to help contribute to a ceasefire here coming up uh, within and they're showing me weeks here. So it's we're right on top of this. It's it's coming up. It's going to help with a ceasefire, but it's not going to stop the overall conflict. I, I still see the overall conflict extending out through towards the end of the year, through you know October months here, before everything does finally settle down, unfortunately. And a lot of love and light going out to the world's central kitchen workers. It was uh, uh, certainly a catastrophe and, and a horrible situation that, that occurred with them. Uh, I think it was on like a 1.7 kilometer stretch or like a three mile stretch of the Gaza Strip. Um, yeah, it's just terrible. 40, hello, Sterling guys. I know anytime that my brother is visiting me from the other side, I smell cigarettes every time. Why cigarettes and how would he smell like cigarettes? It's not like they smoke. Uh, please help me figure this out. Claire, Goose, Claire Gustance and Claire Aliens, I think it's called, uh, those are the Claires that have to do with smelling uh, something. Now, if you're smelling something from the other side, let's call it Claire Aliens, uh, that, that is actually somebody trying to connect with you. It's not always the individual you think it is. So if they're using smoke or cigarette smoke, not normally someone that didn't smoke uh, so I think there's some confusion. I asked the question. It looks like your brother does come around you, but this is another family relative. It's like on the, I'm getting on the grandparent level, a like grand grandparent side here uh, that's trying to connect with you, not your brother. It looks like your brother comes around to you when you're outside, and I'm getting wind. So whether this is like you feel cold chills, you feel burst of wind when there's no wind, uh, I feel like a, a, a breath or a blowing on your on your right ear, there's like, there's a wind connection with your brother. Uh, so anyway, hope that helps. 439 here. Uh, there is a years long continuous debate taking place in Alcoholics Anonymous about the outdated language of the big book since it was written in the 1940s. Many of the fellowship would like to see a supplemental book written in more contemporary plain language so that more people will understand the better messages of hope. Others do not want the language altered in any way. What would our beloved founder, William Griffin Wilson, advise? You know, first off, uh, individuals, uh, founders of, say, Alcohol Anonymous, uh, they don't get involved in humanity, what's happening here. I know it sounds counterintuitive. Uh, guides and angels do. Uh, but once you've crossed over, they don't get involved in the human life lessons going on here. You know, I do see big supplemental rewrites coming for this big book. Because what I'm getting is, and, I, and I'm not directly familiar with the big book, I know about Alcoholics Anonymous, but what I'm getting is that uh, a lot of that was originally based on Christianity. And so I think they're going to broaden the scope of how it's written and how it, and, and it will. It looks like over the next year to two years here, this effort's going to start. It looks like the original one was heavily based on Christianity, is what I'm being told. And uh, and that's why they're going to kind of move it in say, a slightly different direction. So it opens up to a larger uh, scope of people and connects uh, even with a larger scope of people. But but here again, the other message, you know, uh, homo sapiens sapiens, individuals, founders of, you know, religions or alcohol economists, they don't directly get involved with what's happening here with humanity. Um, it's not, it's really not allowed from the other side. Angels, guides, ascended masters, one source, one force. Uh, they all help with keeping you on your path and helping you when you need information, inspiration, let's say change, rewrite a, a book that's helping a lot of humanity. Uh, but that's kind of the way how it works on the other side. Okay, 38 in the countdown. Hi, Sterling and Linda and team. Do ETs ever medically help individuals or is it only the work of birth angels? And how can we tell the difference? 
You know, extraterrestrials frequently assist doctors. So they'll, they'll assist doctors and they will help with information supplied through your guides and angels. So if there's some advanced information, uh, they'll get it to your guides and angels. So you'll receive the message, doctors helping you receive the message. Um, and it happens with ways like, you know, let's say they're trying to understand or diagnose a problem you might have. And then they get a random thought like, I, I need to do a test for X, Y, Z, even though it might may seem random. And they do the test, they find out that correlates uh, to, let's say, the disease you have. So extraterrestrials do get involved, but they're working at a higher level uh, to help humanity overall. So they have very large, a very large scope of what they're trying to accomplish down here. World peace, world health. Uh, advanced forms of new energy, you know, free energy. Again, from a quantum physics standpoint, free energy. Uh, yeah, so that they, they do help, but they don't get to say directly involved, but they kind of facilitate communications and get the messaging through where it needs to uh, take place. 37, what is the outcome for the 42 members of Congress accused of insider trading? Trading. I, I see many being prosecuted, almost half of them being prosecuted for insider trading. And, and then I see fines being leveled. Uh, so no, I don't see jail time, but I do see fines being levied uh, against uh, the 42 members of Congress here. So it's uh, that that's coming up. Uh -huh. 36, hi, Sterling. If we do not live up to the life path we have chosen, is this repeated in our next life? You know, you always have free will on this side and the other side. So whether you want to repeat certain lessons, it's all up to you. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a punch list. It's a check the box. Uh, if there's certain things you didn't learn in this lifetime, you're welcome to uh, pick those as lessons on the next side. Now, you never repeat a life path, right? So linear time on Earth always keeps you moving forward. On the other side, time is nonlinear. That dimension moves faster than the speed of light. Uh, so time is nonlinear. You go backwards and forwards in time. You can't jump across to Earth ahead of linear time on Earth, but you can certainly see what's happening there. But so if you want to, uh, if you want to repeat certain lessons, you can. You can't repeat specific lifetimes. I hope that makes sense. So the, the lifetime you live now with all the individuals in your unique spiritual family, you can't put that all together identically and live a, another life the same way, but you can repeat some of the same lessons you want to learn. 35. Hello, Sterling and friends. Do it says, do you and your team see a cure for herpes in the near future? This virus destroys so many lives. HSV? Is this herpes simplex virus? Is that what this is? HSV. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. I always have to say that. Not a doctor. Uh yeah, it looks like within just a couple of years here, they're gonna have a vaccine that's gonna help with this. It's herpes, yeah. Um, and it will be available to the public. I'm getting as fast as five years here. Um, so they've already identified what they need uh, for HSV. And I know that right now it looks like progress is slow, but within five years, they're going to have a big breakthrough here. Mm -hmm. 34, hello, Sterling and team. My question is regarding the pyramids of Giza, Egypt. What happened to the capstones of the pyramids? Why are they missing? Do they hold any significance to the ETs? Um, I've always I've read on this before, but I'm getting this again. They were stolen. So common thieves stole the capstones. They used rare earth metals. I think in some cases, gold and some other types of highly conductive materials. Remember, the pyramids were energy devices and, and even had like battery technology. So these were conductive devices for atmospheric lightning, that kind of a thing. Uh, but they were stolen. So common thieves stole the capstones. I think that's everything they asked, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, did they hold significance for extraterrestrials? Only that they instructed humanity how to build the pyramids, how to make them work. Uh, but uh, once, you know, extraterrestrials left in that time period, they uh, it was up to humanity to continue on. 33. Hello, Sterling. My question or feedback stems from a viewer's question you were posed <clears throat> last Sunday about organ heart transplantation and using one's own cells. I have been following the research of Dr. Doris Taylor on bioengineering of ghost hearts that can be seeded with recipient's own stem cells to better withstand rejection and the need for anti-rejection drugs. 
<clears throat> can your guides validate this and Dr. Doris Taylor's research coming to a successful fruition, please? So ghost hearts, again, not a doctor here, but ghost hearts, I believe they're printed or they're, they're made up of other biological materials. So it's not a real human heart to start off with. It looks like her research is going to be very helpful in interim, uh, interim help with organs or hearts. My team is being clear with me that I think the technology may have originally started out or they're thinking about uh, addressing a large number of organs, let's say not just hearts, maybe lungs, uh, livers, or I don't know, again, not a doctor. Uh, it looks like the technology was very helpful around hearts and for, let's say, a decade um, helping with people in interim situations that need organs. And then longer term, there's other you know, new technology will play out. So wonderful work this person's doing. Um, I'm just, they're just showing me a clarification. It looks like it may not uh, be as expansive and going across a lot of different types of organs. Um, hope that helps. 32, hi, Sterling and team. I may have missed your answer to this question before, but did the one source, one force create all of the extraterrestrials you speak about who have been around for millions of years? Yes, everything in the universe was created by the one source, the one force. That's the omnipotent, all-powerful energy. It's not a person. It's not a female. It's not a man. Uh, but it is, uh, it's infinite and had no beginning, no end, and still exists. And everything in the universe was created, including extraterrestrials. 31, high sterling and guides. New subscriber here. Have the Secret Service weeded out the bad blood from the January 6th, or will they... Uh, will they be punished? No, they haven't weed out all the uh, all the difficulty in the Secret Service, uh, but uh, there's good information, good intel, intelligence to who, who the individuals are. And so they're being closely watched and monitored. They have not weeded them all out. It's going to take a number of months, a year, uh, to get all this kind of corrected. But uh, they're under close surveillance. Uh, federal government knows who they are. So uh, good progress being made there. And I think that they say they will they be punished. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of them will have some court trials here, uh, but it'll more be like uh, losing um, stuff. It's losing uh, retirement or something. I, I mean, there's some penalties that are going to go on here, um, but uh, I, I don't see prison time, for example. 30, love your show on Sundays. Hello, Sterling and team. My question is, do you see the United States finally doing away with daylight savings time in the near future? You know, I do see, in starting in 2025, a number of states on their own, individual states, uh, go, going doing away with daylight savings time. And then it is going to propagate out like in a 2026 where it becomes more federally mandated. Uh, so we're, we're moving that direction. But my team says it looks like some states will individually um, do it first. And, and I know some already are, and, uh, and that's going to roll on the be more federal, but more like 2026, 29, high Sterling and team. I was recently told during a reading that I had something happen as a young girl that caused me to shut down my psychic abilities. And now as an adult, I'm trying to open them back up. How does a person who has had something happen to them, cause them to shut their psychic abilities down work through that and open them back up. So it's not really a shutdown. I want to be clear. Uh, you know, it, it's the creative, the imagination side of the brain that connects with the universe. That's why, for example, highly creative people connect very easily with the other side. Even though they're not spiritual, they, uh, they download a book, they automatically write a book, or they write a song, they write music, they paint. Uh, so anyway, it's that creative side. Now, it, nothing happened necessarily to shut it down, but if, if we maintain a state of fear, anxiety, depression, you know, ask yourself, just for example, say how creative can you be when you're under a lot of stress, a lot of duress, uh, a lot of anxiety? Um, so it's really kind of getting yourself centered, grounded first, relaxed, all kinds of ways of doing that. Lots of professionals out there that can help you with that in terms of, you know, people doing Reiki healing or some meditation practice is wonderful for centering and grounding, but that ability will come back. And there's some simple homework you can do to bring it back. Uh, I always tell people start off by just saying out loud, ask your primary angels and guides to please step forward. 
Ask them to reveal any messages they have for you. Start there. Sit down with a journal and a pen. Uh, nobody's blocked permanently. We all have the ability at birth. But a lot of people tend to shut it down. So it's like it's like any gift, any skill that we have, uh, you have to kind of continue after it, uh, cultivate it, develop that muscle memory. You're going to be okay. But uh, nobody ever blocks it permanently. You have a way to bring it back. Okay, 28 in the countdown. Years ago, I got stopped by a police officer at 3 a.m. in the morning on my way home from work. I pulled into the townhouse where I lived. After our interaction, the officer drove off. I looked at him and time slowed down. I felt some evil feeling as he drove off. Can you please tell me what happened during that early morning? You know, you were in the presence of danger. Uh, the these are your birth angels stepping in to kind of uh, really reinforce the fact that you were being protected. I don't get the fear was from the police officer. I get there was something going on where almost the police officer stopped uh, prevented the other danger from coming to you. So yeah, you were in danger. And the fact that time slowed down, that was really meant to reinforce and press upon you that there was something angelic, spiritual going on at that time. So you would, you would absolutely remember it, make an impression on you. And you should share the story with others. That's the purpose of these types of events. Share them with others so others can learn from your experience. 27, the same lawmakers who expelled the Tennessee Three have now removed the entire board of trustees for uh, TSU. I think it was a Tennessee State University, a historically black college. They claim funds were mismanaged despite the state underfunding the school by more than $2 billion for years. Why did they do this? And what is the future of TSU? Well, they're trying to exert complete control over the university. It's a little bit of a you know, radical approach to try to exert control. I do see it's going to take a few years here to play out, but then this will turn around. So a little bit of a difficult period coming up here, but absolutely trying to exert control over the university. Not that it's required. Uh, this has to do with a radical approach, unfortunately. And a lot of radicalism going on in that that part of the country right now, unfortunately. Uh, but it's going to play out. I do see a big tipping point within two years here for a lot of what's happening around uh, in Tennessee and also for TSU here. 26. Hello, Sterling and extended family. Love and blessings to all. Something I have noticed, and I'm not sure others have as well, just never known anyone to address this topic. Seems all the religious readers always side with 45, and the spiritual ones do not. Why is this the case? You know, if you're connecting uh, with pure love or a place of spirituality, uh, everything that resonates with love, uh, wine the best for everybody, wine the best for humanity, uh, you know, all those things resonate with love and spirituality. So, you know, I would ask anybody just to using critical thinking skills, you can look at our political landscape worldwide and certainly here in the U.S. and understand who's operating from a place of love and not. And I think this person asked the question, they said, uh, religious perspective. You know, a lot of the world's religions uh, are designed to control people. You know, they're not all bad, but, you know, it's it's almost like if you do X, Y, Z, then you're loved. If you don't, then you're not loved by the church. So, so you know, if you're coming from a place of pure love and spirituality, you're going to see things for the way they are. I, so I hope this makes sense. Um, if you're operating from a place of pure fear and, and, and that kind of a fear belief, you're going to see things differently when it comes to the political landscape. If you're operating from love, you're also going to see that differently uh, in an opposed way, and I think in the better way. 25, if we're all from other star systems, how is Earth populated? The scientific theory is that Africa holds the start of mankind, humankind, which then spread out all over the planet. Where and how was the planet populated by extraterrestrials? You know, Earth was populated uh, millions of years ago by many, uh, over 50 extraterrestrial species, and it didn't happen in one area of Earth. It happened all over. And that's why we have so many uh, different types of uh, races, ethnicities on Earth, languages. Uh, it didn't happen. It, it started off being planted millions of years ago by many extraterrestrial species, but not just in one location on Earth. 
24, hello, Sterling and team. Just wondering if you could read on Oscar Pistorius, the Blade Runner from South Africa. He is out of prison as of January 2024. Will he be able to renew his life and start over? You know, unfortunately, I see, I mean, based, because of the shooting of the girlfriend, I think it was the case that took him into prison, um, that th this will hang over him, hang, hang over his head for his entire life. He's really going to slow down any way to kind of reinvent himself. And it looks to me like he's going to eventually go into seclusion. Um, so it's going to hang over his head, uh, this whole situation. And, uh, you know, we all have a life path that we agree to before we come down here. I, it looks like uh, almost like going into uh, seclusion, you know, for a lot of his life. So he'll be living a more private life for himself. 23, love and light to Sterling and team. Just prior to COVID in downtown Chicago, I was returning from lunch and I heard a loud bird that kept calling. After a few minutes looking and following the sound, I saw a beautiful, deep, purple, shiny, dark black bird on a tree by my building entrance. He was big, almost like a big owl, but gorgeous. I love birds and walked up to him. Actually told him he was a pretty thing. We just looked at each other for a while and when I looked around, no one was on the streets. Was I visited by a family member or is this a warning of some kind? This is actually a family member of yours checking in on you. So remember, family members on the side can manipulate uh, animals. Animals are, are willing participants in conveying messages. And absolutely, this is a family member. And, you know, I pick up a female energy. So it's like a mother-grandmother energy for you. looks like uh, that's a wonderful experience. Uh, and uh, obviously, these experiences are designed from the other side to really make you remember them. They're very impactful. So wonderful. 22, Sterling and team, uh, Steve Bannon recently announced that if 45 wins, that from day one, he's going to arrest all Democrats and those that support them, etc. Do you see if Steve Bannon will ever be truly in prison for his crimes? Uh, so first off, there was no truth to any of those assertions about arresting all Democrats or something. Uh, but yeah, I've always seen that uh, for entertainment purposes only, Bannon will serve some jail time. Looks like 18 to 24 months to me. I've always seen, you know, years ago when a lot of this was happening and all the court cases were coming up, people were asking who was going to serve jail time. And I, my team always saw Bannon being the one that's definitely going to serve jail time, along with a lot of his colleagues. So um, it's coming. 21, hello, Sterling and team. Missouri lawmakers are in a panic over the prospect that voters might overturn their abortion ban and are moving at lightning speed on a constitutional amendment to make it harder to pass initiative, pen, I'm sorry, initiative petitions in Missouri. Will they get away with this? Will Missouri turn blue? The, I'm sorry, law, Missouri lawmakers are in a panic over the prospect that voters might overturn their abortion ban. Got it, got it, got it. Um, yeah, it looks like a successful like amendment to the Constitution or something coming up here um, that's going to help. So uh, in the end, women's reproductive rights are going to be uh, saved. So I, look, I don't know all the details happening on Missouri here, but from this question, uh, they're a panic over the prospect of voters might return the abortion ban. Um, yeah, it looks like it will. It will. Uh, constitutional amendment coming up here in Missouri and federally um, that will give women's reproductive rights back. As I'm getting in, uh, it's all going to get put in place. 20. Will Katie Porter become part of Biden's cabinet in his second term as president? Yes, I believe she will. And oddly enough, it, it looks like it has something to do with commerce. I don't know, Commerce Secretary or something is what they're telling me, but she will have a place in the cabinet. 19, recently Bernie Sanders made a proposal to Congress to change the work week from 40 hours to 32 hours without lowering pay for a better work-life balance. Do you see this bill getting approved? Um, I don't see the bill being approved in that specific form. So I do see a lot of states here and even some federal agencies going to a 32-hour work week, but not with pay for 40 hours. So I do see a reduction in the requirement to, to go into a 32-hour work week, but not with 40 hours of pay. I hope that makes sense. 
Um, so it's coming. It's coming. Now, years down the road, it looks like there'll be more enhanced pay, which is almost kind of makes up for, you know, getting paid for 40 hours for working 32. But it's like it's not going to happen exactly the way uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, I guess, first envisioned it here. 18. Were the killings of the World Central Kitchen staff intentional by the Israeli forces? No, I, I don't see this uh, as being intentional, but extremely careless. And it looks like there was something else they were after in that area. Uh, extremely careless, um, you know, really a lot of bad uh, military uh, strategy planning in that area. But I, my team's saying they weren't directly targeted, but there's something going on in that area that was being targeted, and they, they kind of over, overrode any kind of safeguards. Um, really very unfortunate all the way around. Uh, but I, I don't see – they're telling me it wasn't intentional by the Israeli forces, but what they're doing in that area was very intentional. 17, hello, Sterling and team. Diabetic nerve pain, when it hits, zaps me for one to two days. Do you see any relief? I can't seem to find anything to stop the pain. Again, not a doctor here, but I, I see that this is being caused by uh, circulation problems, a reduction in the size of veins carrying blood, blood vessels. Looks like within a few years here, uh, good progress being made on medications, to help with uh, vascular circulation uh, and what causes, I guess, the shrinking of certain blood vessels if you have a diabetic condition. Again, not a doctor, but I do see medication coming up here to help with uh, circulation and vascular health is what they're telling me. That's coming. So I wish I could tell you it was going to be tomorrow, but um, I'd say try working with your doctor because I'm even getting there may be certain types of nutrients that may help the body with certain types of circulation. So uh, ho hopefully that helps. 16, hello, Sterling. Does the proposed Mediterranean Dead Sea Canal, which would be an alternative to the Suez Canal and exits right across Gaza, have anything to do with the genocide and land grab on Gaza now? Yeah, I think we talked about this earlier in the show. Um, yeah, I mean, it's opportunistic at this point is that now that the war is there, uh, they're, they're going to actually continue to build that extra canal and there'll be their Saudi Arabian money, Saudi interest there, Israeli interest, um, but it's going to move ahead. So the person asked, was the proposed country to uh, have anything to do with the genocide or land grab? It's not how it started, but it's opportunistic. So that's keeping uh, the conflict uh, going forward. It's one of the, the factors is keeping the conflict going forward. And, and that canal will be built, I'm being told. 15. Sterling, do we experience anxiety, depression, or social conflicts on the other side? No, those are all earthbound. Uh, Homo sapiens, sapiens, uh, soul-based uh, experiences when we're on earth here. So no, they don't exist in an environment that's pure love. So no, I think they're asking about depression, conflicts, uh, anxiety. No, uh, th those are all, they're not just earthbound, but they're important for communicating certain types of life lessons we experience here. It's almost like the yin and yang of the universe. So whether they're, you know, love, fear, good, bad. Uh, so, but those don't exist in the pure love environment on the other side. Hope that helps. Okay. 14 in the countdown. Hello, Sterling. You have indicated in prior shows that free will can affect the speed, scope, and scale of your life path blueprint achievements. If someone manages to use their free will and speeds up and completes their life goals, then what happens for the rest of their life until their exit point? Is the rest of their life easy or is their exit point moved up? I hope not. You know, you never complete your entire life goals until you exit. So you're right. We talk about free will and how it affects the speed you move through your life path, the scope and the scale of your achievements. So what happens is you never really complete all your life goals, so you exit. So let's say you move very radically fast through your life path. Usually what that means is then you're going to affect more people. So now instead of affecting 10 people or 10,000, you might affect 10 million people. So you constantly evolve while you're here on Earth. Um, it's never, let's say, a game where if I rush through and I complete everything fast, uh, now I can exit fast. 
your exit point really doesn't appreciably move. You plan that out before you come down here. And that's why you can't leave before it's your time. And I always talk a lot of times about individuals that may try to commit suicide and keep coming back or keep getting saved. If it's not your time, you can't get off the planet. Uh, likewise, if a suicide does take you off the planet, it is part of a life path lesson that affects you, family, everyone around you, including doctors. So all of our life paths are interconnected. Probably a little bit more of an answer than this person was looking for, but I, my guides were saying it's kind of important to bring those factors up. My angels as well here. 13, love and light to you. Can your guides please help us understand our relationship with the one source, one force? Growing up, I felt that God was someone who knew me and all of our humans personally. If I spoke to God, he would hear me. Does the one source, one force know us in that way? Or should we only look for guidance from our spiritual team? So we talked about this before. Uh, the one source, the one force is omnipresent, omnipotent, all-powerful, all-present. Uh, everything connects to the one source, the one force. Think about the one source, the one force as like the ocean. We're all drops of water in the ocean, all part of it. Um, so, you know, whatever term you use for the one source, the one force, you can certainly connect with them. Uh, you also connect with your angelic team, your birth angels, your guides are around supporting you. Um, you know, whenever you pray or whenever you ask for guides on the other side, your angels and guides help, your birth angels, your working spiritual guides. You can extend out to archangels, you know, ascended masters, the one source, the one force. It's all connected. It's all a universal telephone company. So it's it's neither here nor there that uh, if you think you're, remember the one source, the one force is not male, female. It's omnipresent, all powerful. It's not an individual. Um, it's an energy that exists everywhere. So hopefully that helps. When you're connecting with everything on the other side, you have the ability to connect with everything on the other side and bring through the information, healing, or whatever it is you need. It's all there for you. So hopefully that helps. 12. As we reincarnate many times throughout history, why is it during NDEs to some nothing looks familiar? <clears throat> Well, during NDEs, near-death experiences are all highly dependent on how far you get through the death process. Typically, NDEs are called near-death experiences because it's not complete death. You don't go through the entire death process. Like many times, you go partially into it. It may seem family members with their backs to you, and that really means you're not being, you know, this is not your time. You have a birth angel that will turn you around if it's not your time. But uh, that's why you don't see everything on the other side. And I think that's why they ask the question here. Uh, yeah, nothing looks familiar. Really, because you're, you're not going through the full death process. If you were to go through the full death process, you'd start to see all of your family members' times. You know, you would see everything looks much more familiar. So until you're done with the human experience here, you're not going to get across to the other side fully. 11. Hello, Sterling and team. When I was very young, I used to see eyes peering under my door into my nursery. I also saw dancing household items and flashlights under my crib at night. As a preschooler, I had two imaginary friends that I played with while riding my tricycle outside. Uh, were these early indications of some type of ability or guides of my life? My adult life has also been peppered with vivid dreams and other phenomenon, curious to know the signs we might experience in childhood. You know, it's very common, I talk about this all the time, that in childhood, up to the age of six, seven, eight, even nine years old, we all have full psychic ability. So we're, we come into the world with full ability. So very common for us to see individuals on the other side, friends, people who have crossed over. Maybe they're family members or children that didn't make it in the family, but they come through spiritually. You'll see them as a child. You can play with them. It could be neighbors that uh, may have died. Uh, so it's very, very common. Now, a lot of the things this person's saying, they saw dancing household items under my crib. You know, it, it, it's typical that you could see orbs and people and apparitions and family members. Uh, so it, it's not uncommon. What this, what you're describing, whoever asked the question is very, very common in childhood. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, adults handle it uh, quite differently. So a lot of times when children will say, look, I'm talking to a man in the corner and he's building a ship in a bottle. And that could be their, their grandfather that's now has now died and passed on. But some family members will say, stop talking to the person. They'll try to shut down that gift of the child. So yeah, it's the way families interact, but you were experiencing the other side as a child. 10. 
after we die and settle into the life beyond, will we be able to ask, will we be able to seek and find that person or persons in history that changed the world or had tremendous influence to us? For example, Abraham Lincoln comes to mind immediately for me, or will we no longer care about events that occurred on earth? You actually see the world differently on the other side. You can certainly seek out anybody that you want to communicate with on the other side and deal with. Um, you know, when you're on the other side, people have, you, you experience them differently. So while somebody had a, a major impactful life here on earth, could be a famous politician, a famous star, a famous actor. Remember, many times that might be one of their 50 or 100 lives that they experience. So when you experience their soul energy on the other side, you don't experience them just as that one individual. Uh, you know, this is all part of the evolution that we have energetically we go to the other side. But you can certainly seek out those souls. Certainly souls that were down here, like Abraham Lincoln, had literally more than 100 lifetimes, very highly evolved soul. People like to deal with them on the other side as well, too. But it's a little different experience. So I hope it gives you a little color, so to speak, as to how things look or feel. We, we, we certainly can look like anybody we want to look like on the other side, and many people do. They maintain their same kind of what they look like human form. Uh, but you may respond differently because of the spiritual environment you're in. Nine, hi, Sterling and team. I was just reading that in Finland... They have an underground storage facility that will be able to store 5,500 tons of nuclear waste. What kind of repercussions will this cause in the future? You know, this is all part of the way countries are storing nuclear waste uh, from like nuclear power plants, nuclear facilities. So this is a common practice. Don't see any big ramifications. For example, this storage facility in Finland, was it? In Finland. Um, within a number of years here, we're going to have very good technology to decompose nuclear waste. You give it about five, 10 years here. This is all coming from several uh, ET groups. But we'll have a way to dismantle, disintegrate nuclear waste. So for the purpose of this question, uh, no major uh, events. I don't see any major events coming from this particular storage facility but I will tell you that a number of countries are doing this. So it's, it's a common practice around the world. Eight, will the military stop showing Fox News? Currently, it is shown in waiting rooms and all official viewing areas. Yes, in late 2025, there'll be a move uh, to have different types of newscasts. Uh, more balanced newscast uh, playing uh, in waiting room. So it won't be a mandate to show, say, just Fox or Fox News. Yeah, I, I do see that having a number of different types of uh, different news networks broadcasts going on. Yes. Seven. Sterling, my wife and I both experienced the same phenomena separately a couple of hours apart. I got up from bed at about 4 a.m. in the morning to find the living room softly glowing with a clear white vibrational light. It did not emanate from a central source, just filled the room. I was not awake enough to ask who or what was there and went back to bed. My wife, when she got up later, asked if someone was walking around downstairs and also saw a glowing light in the living room. I have witnessed some beings peeking around corners uh, in our house before, but nothing this bright. Can you shed some insights as to what or who was visiting us and why? These are relatives visiting you from the other side. These are not extraterrestrials, but these are relatives. Uh, they're talking about living room softly glowing, clear vibrational light. Yeah. Um, these are relatives visiting you, but from both sides of the family. So, you know, it's interesting. Relatives will come around when they feel there's a need to kind of make their presence known. They want to make sure you know that you might be thinking about them, might be going through a stressed time in your life, but they're trying to connect with you. Uh, these are your relatives. You know, and they're just telling me I see several adults and children in terms of your relatives coming around to visit you from the other side. Six, uh, greetings, Team Sterling. Many Republicans have indicated that 45, if convicted, uh, would change their mind. I'm sorry, let me read it again. Six, greetings, Team Sterling. Many Republicans have indicated that if 45 is convicted, it would change their minds about voting for him. Do you see him being convicted before the election? And if so, Will this affect the results? You know, I, I do see him being convicted in the, uh, the hush money trial, the Stormy Daniels trial. I do see that conviction happening. 
Um, however, I don't see a lot of uh, a big shift in in votes away from Trump for that reason. I see a lot of shifts away from 45 uh, due to women's reproductive rights. Very important for a lot of women in the country, for a lot of men too. Uh, but it's just that is like, it's a bigger, it's almost like the trains are left the station. The people that are going to vote uh, and move away from 45 are doing for other reasons. The convictions looks like I have a kind of a small effect uh, on some remaining more radical right right wing uh, contingencies. So it looks like the other things will affect voting strategies uh, other than just whether he's convicted. But I do see that hush money trial leading to a conviction uh, before the election. Five, uh, Sterling, you indicated there would be Republican president in 2028. I believe your guide said that, yes, for four years. Then a woman would be elected as a Democratic president, yes. And that was 2032. What do your guides say those four years will be like? Will we have some more destruction uh, or progress being made, or could it be protected somehow? You know, I don't see a huge destruction with a 2028 election cycle. Uh, it looks like a lot of safeguards get put in place, like uh, in 2024 to 2028, uh, like removal of um, filibuster. There's a lot of things going to be happening here and amendments to the Constitution that will prevent a lot of radical destruction happening in the 2028 to 2032 uh, presidential cycle with a Republican. But then I do see uh, a Democratic woman uh, winning the presidential election in 2032. Yeah. Or, hello, Sterling. My question is, I often wonder why many people want to know what is going to happen in the future, seeking out healers and psychics so that we know what is going to happen. Is there a certain personality that leans towards needing or wanting to know? For me, I have been that person, spent most of my life this way, but what if the real work is being at peace with the now being present with what is? You know, the integration of psychics and mediums are meant to give you a trajectory, some guardrails around your life. It's really not meant to live your life for you, answer all the unanswered questions. Remember, we're down here for life lessons. Um, it's true that if somebody leans too much on a psychic or a meme all the time, you're not taking a responsibility for your life. You're not manifesting clearly. So nothing wrong with guardrails. And I'll add another layer to this. You know, we all want to live in love. We want to kind of move away from fear. I think many times uh, psychic and mediums can help people uh, get out of the fear space. They can think about 12 different ways or 26 different ways. Everything's going to go wrong for them tomorrow. But kind of hearing about how things may in fact go right and will go right is based on an Akashic Records. Psychics and guides bring information forward from the Akashic Records. That can give you some peace and calm you down, allow you to kind of get on that right trajectory. So it's not a matter of answering every question you have in life, but helping you move along your path in a more peaceful way. So I hope that uh, helps you. And I think everyone needs to get comfortable with their own psychic gifts. We all have them. And you want to lean on your guides and angels to help. Three, hi, Sterling, the case of Buchanan versus 45 stems from the 2020 forcible clearing of the D.C. Church Square so 45 could hold his Bible op photo. What do you see for the outcome? I, I see the cases moving forward, like in 2024 here. So a lot of the plaintiffs moving forward, I do see successful uh, prosecution and then some sort of like financial penalties and, and benefits being paid out. So it looks like these cases are going to move forward. Um, whoever is asking this question, yes, absolutely. Okay, and number two and number one on the countdown. I always take notes prior to the show start, so I'll read those back to you now. Number two, do you see anything coming up this week? More financial negotiations and offshore funding sources revealed for 45 regarding some of these bonds. New Saudi Arabia-based joint ventures for 45 announced. Two new court decisions for 45 relative to federal cases. Two new decisions coming down here relative to the federal cases. I also see new electric vehicle standards proposed across several nations to adequately, adequately plan for electrical infrastructure. Also, new announcements from Elon Musk on new investment areas. It's going to surprise the world. 
And the Iceland volcanic eruptions and lava flows are going to continue. Looks like there's con continuation here. Don't see a lot of loss of life, but still continuing. And unfortunately, the last one here, it looks like another mass shooting coming up here in Europe. So whenever you be careful, um, our European friends and family out there, just be careful around large public open spaces. Um, looks like the, the police are going to have some sort of uh, advanced knowledge of this. So something going on in Interpol, they're going to kind of know. But another, it looks like another mass shooting uh, coming up here. So everybody, please be careful. And number one, the countdown. Do you have anything your guides want to share? Learn to trust yourself and love yourself before you try to love and trust another. Everything we experience in the universe and the reality we create around us actually starts with us. So on that note, that concludes the show being recorded for Sunday, April 7th, 2024. As always, if you need to reach me, go to sterlingpsychicmedium.com, look for the book session tab. Again, we've you know, launched our platinum level YouTube membership. Very easy. Uh, if you can't find the link on our YouTube channel, again, just go to our website on the homepage. There's a button there now that just will lead you directly to YouTube membership. And that will give you full access again to all the video archives. Uh, ability to access and be part of members-only live video streams, address all kinds of questions, including personal questions. So looking forward to uh, getting involved, and we're, we're rolling that all out uh, as we speak. So wish everybody a tremendous goodwill and a great deal of love to you and your families. Take care. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon.